So the microbiome is really popular these days, and a lot of people seem to have the image of it as one big happy family of bacteria all cooperating for their benefit and ours. Yeah. Is, is that right? We don't think so, no. I mean, the, definitely the microbiome, you know, as defined as sort of the bacteria and other microbes that we carry, um, is uh, a very important system for our health. And we've certainly evolved a long time with it, and it provides us with many benefits, you know, including helping our immune development, helping nutrition, and so on. Um, but the logical misstep then is to assume that just because it's benefiting us, that the microbes themselves are some kind of utopian or cooperative group that are acting entirely in our interests and in each other's interests. The analogy we like to use is um, it's more of kind of an ecosystem on a leash. So basically what you're seeing is uh, a, a, a real sort of ecosystem with complex interactions and species duking it out and fighting and so on. But that ecosystem then is being controlled to some extent by the host who has a huge interest in trying to maintain it as a, a, a sort of a helpful system. But it's not correct to assume, at least without uh, doing a lot of experiments, a lot of work we haven't done yet, that the system itself is functioning like one big happy family now. So, so you might think that you know, if they're all duking it out, that one clone is going to win. But it doesn't, it sounds like not three or five, but hundreds of different bacteria can persist in this ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. How, how is that possible? That's a, that's a very good question. So um, yeah, it's commonly assumed that if you have competition in an ecosystem, that but, you know, one thing might just win out, right? But actually, that's not what happens in practice, and that's for sort of uh, reasons that uh, ecologists and evolutionary biologists worked out long ago, which is that competing strains and species will tend to evolve, you know, uh, further apart from each other. It's called character displacement in sort of classical evolutionary biology. It's something that Darwin talked about. So if you have a lot of competing species, um, they will tend to evolve to actually ex uh, uh, live in what we call different niches and different positions in, in, uh, in, in space, but also use different nutrients and so on. And in that way, competition can actually create and actually maintain diversity. So it's all diversity. like they're seeking different careers somehow. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. They end up finding, I mean, it's exactly, we do actually talk colloquially about us finding our own niche in society. It's not exactly the same, but it's the same basic idea. That's right. So you can have competition without losing diversity. Yeah. Interesting.